Hey I'm Max and today I'll show you how to make a save system in Unreal Engine 5. To show this I made a simple game where there are cubes and when you go on them it adds a coin and then destroys. So if I play the game you can see when I walk around and I go on a cube it says 1, then I go on the other one 2, 3 and then 4. But you can see when I restart the game I'm back where I started and the coins are here and I'm back to 0. So let's make it so it saves where I am, how many coins I have and the cubes that are gone. And then when I start the game again, it loads back all of the data. So to do this, you simply go in your content drawer, right click, go into blueprint class, and then search for save game. So you click the save game here, select, and then name it whatever you want. I just called mine BP save game. Now when you open your save game, you should see that there is absolutely nothing in there, it's normal. So a save game is going to save all of the variables you put in it into a file, so then you can load them back. In our case, we want to have three variables. The first will be the amount of coins, which will be a integer. The second will be the player position, which will be a vector, just like this. Obviously, you put whatever you need in there for your game. I'm just doing this as example. And the third will be a array of vectors, which will be the coin positions. So to make an array, you just have to click to the right of the variable type and click on array. Then I'm going to create a function to save all of those variables more easily. So just click on plus function and then type something like save data. And then you can simply go in your inputs and add the same variables you have here. So I'm going to add the int, a vector, and then a vector array. I'm going to call them the same thing, it doesn't really matter. And then you can simply set your variables by dragging them in and putting set and then simply linking all of them up and linking them with the function parameter. So this is going to make your code a lot cleaner than having to set them in your instance or wherever you save. So we are pretty much done with this, we can compile and save. Then in my game instance, you can do this wherever you want to save. I prefer to do it in the game instance because I save my coins here, but technically you could do this anywhere. So in my game instance, I'll add a function, I'll call it save game. Then in here I will drag and do create save game object. Then I'll select my BP save game I just created with my variables. Then you can drag from your save game object and use your save data function we just made. And you can see it makes it a lot cleaner to have them all in one function instead of having to set 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 all of the time. Now for the coin I'll just put get coin right here. For the player position, I will actually call save game from my players, so I could just put it as an input and drag it in when I call it. But for the sake of this video, I'll show you how to do it without this. So I can simply do get player character and then do my get actor location and drag this in here. For the coin pause, I will need to get all actors of class before saving the data. I will get my BP test, which is for me the actor that gives the coins. And then you can see I have an array of actors and here I need an array of positions. Because you cannot save an actor in a save data. You have to save for example the position, the rotation and all of its variables, but you cannot save an actor reference because an actor reference is just a pointer. So if you save this, you will get nothing out of it when you load it. So to get the positions out of this, I will simply create a local variable, which is going to be a variable just for this function. I will name it coins, it doesn't really matter. Put it as a vector array. Then I'll drag all of this to make some space. With my array of actors, I'll do a for each loop. I'll link this up right here. And for each, I will add the get actor location to my coins array. So I get all of the coins, then each coin I get the location and I will simply add it and I will simply add it to my array like this of coin vectors, just like that. And then once the loop is completed, so we have added all of the coins in the array, I will simply take my save data we did earlier. I guess I'll put this down here, complete it, link it here, and then I can put my coins array in the coins position. So this is what it looks like for me, but obviously you can save whatever you want in your game. I doubt you have to save the exact same things as me. This is just to give you an idea. So now you can see if I compile, there's no errors. Now I can go in my BP top-down character, which is simply the template character. Right click, do end play. 
and I pretty much want to save when the character is ending its play, so when it is deleted or when the game is closed. I will simply get my game instance, then I will cast it to my BP game instance, and from there I will simply save game, which is going to call my function here, which is going to create a save game object, put all of the data in it, and then save it. There's one last thing we need to do, once we have put all of our data inside of our save game object, we actually need to save it to a slot. So you can drag back from the save game object, drag all the way to the end, it's kind of far, but <laughs> that's what you have to do. And then type save game to slot. Then you can link this up, you can put the slot name whatever you want, you just need to use the same name when you load. So you can put the name of the character if you want to have a different save for every character. Or you can just put something like save if you just want to have one. And this is going to save it to a file in your saved folder. So if we compile and run this now, let's say I move around a little bit, I click a Q. When I stop the game, you can see I got an error and it says get player character, return value, none. So you can see here I get the player character, but after it has ended play. So that obviously doesn't work. Instead of getting the player character right here, which is going to be undefined once the game is closing, I'm simply going to drag the player pause into my function, which is going to add it as a parameter. So in the input, we now have player pause, which is linked here. And then in my top down character, when I call save game, I'm just going to drag in the get actor location. So now if I compile this and I run the game, I move a little bit, I close it. You can see there are no errors. And if I open my folder, go into my saved, save games, you can see I have my save here. And this is the name of the slot. If you open this, you can see the data is not readable for a human. But now you can see if I click play again, it doesn't load it. Obviously, we need to do that too. So let's create another function, load game. In here, we want to load game from slot. Then you need to put the same slot name. So in my case, it's save. Then you drag from this cast it to our BP save game because by default it's just a save game and then from here we get get coins for example then we can set our coins back and we can let's say print the value of the coins so we can see if it works so just print this then we can get the player position then we can get the player character and set actor location to the player position saved in the save game. And finally, we can get our coins positions. And then for each of our coin positions, so for each loop, we can simply create actor from class or spawn actor from class, then spawn back our BP test. And in the transform, we can simply break that, link our location, and this should spawn actors at the location that we set. So now if I compile that, go in my top down character and on begin play, I want to get my game instance and cast it again. But this time instead I want to do load game. So when I begin play, I load the game. When I end play, I save the game. And now if I play, you can see if I move and I pick up, let's say two coins. Now I'm at four, I close it, I open it again. I'm back at the spot, I'm back at four but my tests are still here and that's because they are set in my level so when I load back in it's simply going to create duplicates of the one that are saved in my save game but it's still going to leave the ones in my level originally. So you can see here when we load game you can see it says returns object containing loaded game state null if load fails. So if it fails it's going to go in the cast fail here so this means there is no save game yet, so it's the first time you launch the game pretty much. So if it goes here, that means the game has already been saved, which means all of the coin positions has been saved. So either what you could do is delete all of the coins in your level and spawn them if there is no save game, so spawn the coins here. But this would be a little bit of trouble to do because you would have to spawn them at the right position. Instead, I think what's better to do is to simply create a function, delete all coins, then you get all actors of class. In my case, they're called BP test. And then simply for each of them, like this, you destroy the actor. So this is going to destroy all of the coins in the levels. 
And in my load game, if there is a save file, I know I will spawn all of the coins that are saved. So before doing this, I can simply delete all the coins. So it's going to delete them all, the ones that are in the level, and then spawn the ones in the save file. So now if I save this, I load it back in, and I take, let's see, two cubes, I close it, I reopen it, you can see the two cubes are gone, it says eight, and I'm still at the right position. If I take one more, I close it, I open it, I'm back at my position, 12, and, and there is only one cube left, and if I take it, I'm now at 16, I close, I open it, I'm still at 16, right position, and the coins are all gone. If you want, you can go back in your save and you can simply delete this save file here. And when you load it back in, you can see I'm back at the normal position and they are all back. So if I, if I take them all again, I'm at 4 and I load back in, I'm at 4. So everything works perfectly. So as I said, put whatever variables you need in here and then you can simply put them back in your game by spawning actors or setting locations. Also a little tip in case you need it, uh, in my case I call the save game from the end play of the player, but maybe in your game you don't have a player or you don't want to save necessarily when a player ends the play. So if you want you can also go in your game instance, right click and search for the event shutdown, which is going to be called when the game instance is being shut down, so pretty much when the game closes. But keep in mind that like before in the character, before we put the actor location as a input, if you try to get the player character during the shutdown event and save with it, you can see it will give you an error right here, access none trying to read get player character because the game is shutting down so the character is not available anymore. So this could be useful to save some things, but maybe not things like characters or actors. So I'm not sure if you're going to use this, but I wanted to say it anyway. I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe.